Kehuan or Javanism, also called Kabatanan, Agama Jawa, and Kapekayan, is a Javanese religious tradition, consisting of an amalgam of animistic, Buddhist, Hindu and Islamic, especially Sufi, beliefs and practices. It is rooted in Javanese history and religiosity, syncretizing aspects of different religions. Definitions <inaudible> 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 The term Kabatanan is being used interchangeably with Kehuan, Agama Jawa and Kapekayan, although they are not exactly the same Kabatanan, the science of the inner inwardness, derived from the Arabic word batan, meaning inner or hidden Kehuan, Javanism, the culture and religious beliefs and practices of the Javanese people of Central Java and East Java. It is not a religious category, but refers to an ethic and a style of life that is inspired by Javanist thinking. Agama Jawa, the Javanese religion. Kapekayan, belief, faith. Full term, Kapekayan Kepada Tuhan Yang Maha Esa, believer in one mighty God. Kapekayan is an official cover term for various forms of mysticism in Indonesia. According to Calderola, it is not an apt characterization of what the mystical groups have in common. It includes Kabatanan, Kejivan, and Kerahanian. Kabatanan is the inner directed cultivation of inner peace, rooted in pre Islamic traditions, whereas Kehuan is outer directed and community oriented, manifesting in rituals and practices. History Java has been a melting pot of religions and cultures, which has created a broad range of religious belief, including animism, spirit cults, and cosmology. <inaudible> Hinduism and Buddhism Indian influences came firstly in the form of Hinduism, which reached the Indonesian archipelago as early as the 1st century. By the 4th century, the kingdom of Kutai in East Kalimantan, Taramanagara in West Java, and Holang Kalinga in Central Java, were among the early Hindu states established in the region. Several notable ancient Indonesian Hindu kingdoms are Mataram, famous for the construction of the majestic Prambanan Temple, followed by Kediri and Singhasari. Since then Hinduism, along with Buddhism, spread across the archipelago and reached the peak of its influence in the 14th century. The last and largest of the Hindu Buddhist Javanese empires, that of the Majapahit, influenced the entire Indonesian archipelago. Hinduism and Buddhism penetrated deeply into all aspects of society, blending with the indigenous tradition and culture. One conduit for this were the ascetics, called Resi, who taught a variety of mystical practices. A Resi lived surrounded by students, who took care of their master's daily needs. Resi's authorities were merely ceremonial. At the courts, Brahmin clerics and Pujinga sacred literati legitimized rulers and linked Hindu cosmology to their political needs. Presently, small Hindu enclaves are scattered throughout Java, but there is a large Hindu population along the eastern coast nearest Bali, especially around the town of Banyuwangi. <laughs> Islam Java adopted Islam around 1500 CE. Islam was first accepted by the elites and upper echelons of society, which contributed to the further spread and acceptance. Sufism and other versions of folk Islam were most easily integrated into the existing folk religion of Java. The learned versions of Sufi Islam and Shari backquote oriented Islam were integrated at the courts, blending with the rituals and myths of the existing Hindu-Buddhist culture. Clifford Geertz described this as Abangan and Priyi, the lower class and elite varieties of Javanese syncretism. The Kyai, the Muslim scholar of the writ became the new religious elite as Hindu influences receded. Islam recognizes no hierarchy of religious leaders nor a formal priesthood, but the Dutch colonial government established an elaborate rank order for mosque and other Islamic preaching schools. In Javanese peasantron Islamic schools, the Kyai perpetuated the tradition of the Resi. Students around him provided his needs, even peasants around the school. Christianity Christianity was brought to Java by Portuguese traders and missionaries, from the Dutch Reformed Church, and in the 20th century also by Roman Catholics, such as the Jesuits and the Divine Word missionaries. 
Nowadays there are Christian communities, mostly reformed in the larger cities, though some rural areas of south-central Java are strongly Roman Catholic. Roman Catholics and other Christian groups have been persecuted for their beliefs such as a ban on Christmas services or decorations. Islam and Kabatinan Nowadays more than 90% of the people of Java are Muslims, on a broad continuum between Abangan and Santri. Although Java is nominally Islamitic, Kehuan, the syncretic Javanese culture, is a strong undercurrent. Pre-Islamic Javan traditions have encouraged Islam in a mystical direction. Some Javanese texts relate stories about Sayak Siti Jena, also known as Sayak Lamara Bang, who had conflicts with Wali Sangha, the nine Islamic scholars in Java, and the Sultanate of Demak. Although Sayak Siti Jena was a Sufi whose teaching was similar with al halaj most of his followers come from Kabatanan. Some historians have doubted the existence of Sayak Siti Jena, suggesting the stories represent conflicts between Kabatanan and Islam in the past. With the Islamization of Java, there emerged a loosely structured society of religious leadership, revolving around Qayyas, Islamic experts possessing various degrees of proficiency in pre Islamic and Islamic law, belief, and practice. The Qayyas are the principal intermediaries between the villagers' masses and the realm of the supernatural. However, this very looseness of Kyai leadership structure has promoted schism. There were often sharp divisions between orthodox Kyais, who merely instructed in Islamic law, with those who taught mysticism and those who sought reformed Islam with modern scientific concepts. As a result, the Javanese recognized two broad streams of religious commitment. Santri or Pudahan, pure ones, those who pray, performing the five obligatory daily ritual prayers. They are more orthodox in their Islamic belief and practice, and oppose the Abangan, who they consider to be heterodox. Abangan, the Red Ones, who do not strictly observe the Islamic rituals. They have mixed pre-Islamic animistic and Hindu Indian concepts with a superficial acceptance of Islamic belief, and emphasize the importance of the purity of the inner person, the Batan, this distinction between the high Islam or scripturalist, Shari backquota oriented Islam of the backquote ulama. And living local Islam, or folk Islam, or popular Islam, is not restricted to Java, but can be found in other Islamic countries as well. Ernest Gellner has developed an influential model of Muslim society, in which this dichotomy is central. He sees a dialectical relationship between the two, with periods of scripturalist dominance followed by relapses into emotional, mystical, magical folk Islam. Modernity, especially urbanization and mass literacy, unsettles the balance between the two, by eroding the social basis of folk Islam. An irreversible shift to scripturalist Islam occurs, which is in Gellner's view the equivalent of secularization in the West. Bruinesen finds this too limited, and distinguishes three overlapping spheres shari oriented Islam Sufism mystical Islam, which has its learned and popular variants the periphery of local rituals, local shrines, local spirit cults, and heterodox beliefs and practices in general. Javanese syncretistic religiousness has a strong popular base, outnumbering the Santri and the support for Islamic political parties. Choi relates this to a Javanese apparent openness to new religions, but filtering out only those elements which fit into the Javanese culture. Choi mentions several reasons for this nominal Islamic identity. The Islamic scholars in Java have been trained in curricula which were geared for social conditions of two or three centuries ago, lacking the ability to impart the spirit and sense of Islam. The inability to summarize the principles of Islam in understandable basic points which can be applied to daily life. Kabatanan can be learned and understood without the need to learn Arabic. In the early 20th century, several groups became formalized, developing systematized teachings and rituals, thus offering a high form of Abangan religiosity, as an alternative to the high Islam. Bruinesen opines that the Kabatanan movements is a deliberate rejection of scriptural Islam, which arose out of folk Islam. Topic. Characteristics Topic. Aim Kabatanan is derived from the Arabic word batan, meaning inner, or hidden, or inner self. It is a metaphysical search for harmony within one's inner self, connection with the universe, and with an almighty God. Kabatanan believe in a superconsciousness, which can be contacted through meditation. 
Topic: <laughs> Beliefs. Kabatinan is a combination of metaphysics, mysticism and other esoteric doctrines from animistic, Hinduistic, Buddhist and Islamic origins. Although the Javanese culture is tolerant, and open to new religions, only those qualities are accepted and filtered which fit into the Javanese culture, character and personality. Javanese ideals combine human wisdom psyche and perfection the follower must control his, her passions, eschewing earthly riches and comforts, so that he, she may one day reach enlightened harmony and union with the spirit of the universe. According to Choi, the Kabatinan have no certain prophet, sacred book, nor distinct religious festivals and rituals. Nevertheless, various Kabatinan movements have their own foundational writings and founders. A Kabatinan practitioner can identify with one of the six officially recognized religions, while still subscribe to the Kabatinan belief and way of life. Topic. Membership Although Kabatinan is a predominantly Javanese tradition, it has also attracted practitioners from other ethnic and religious groups, such as Chinese and Buddhists, and foreigners from Australia and Europe. President Suharto counted himself as one of its adherents. Their total membership is difficult to estimate as many of their adherents identify themselves with one of the official religions. Topic. Official recognition The Indonesian state ideology strives toward a unified nation, recognizing only monotheism. Meanwhile, there is also a tolerance for non-recognized religions. A broad plurality of religions and sects exist. In the middle of 1956, the Department of Religious Affairs in Yogyakarta reported 63 religious sects in Java other than the official Indonesian religions. Of these, 22 were in West Java, 35 were in Central Java, and 6 in East Java. These include also Kabatinan groups, such as Sumara. This loosely organized current of thought and practice was legitimized in the 1945 constitution, but failed to attain official recognition as a religion. In 1973, it was recognized as Kapekayan Kepada Tuhan Yang Maha Esa, Indonesian, belief in one mighty God but withdrawn from the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Religion and placed under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Education and Culture. Practices A variety of practices is being used in Kabatinan to acquire ilmu, namely tiraka and tapa or tapabrata. Many Kabatinan followers practice in their own way to seek spiritual and emotional relief. These practices are not performed in churches or mosques, but at home or in caves or on mountain perches. Meditation in Javanese culture is a search for inner self-wisdom and to gain physical strength. This tradition is passed down from generation to generation. <laughs> Meditation There are several tapa Tapa nga long meditation by hanging from a tree Tapakunkam meditation under small waterfall or meeting point of two to three rivers, temperant, jampuhan. Topic fasting Fasting is a common practice employed by Javanese spiritualists in order to attain discipline of mind and body to get rid of material and emotional desires, pasamuti abstention from eating anything that is salted and sweetened, only eat, drink pure water and rice, pasa sen and kemis fasting on Monday to Thursday fasting for a longer period, usually three, five, seven days. Topic. Animistic worship Kabatinan often implies animistic worship, because it encourages sacrifices and devotions to local and ancestral spirits. These spirits are believed to inhabit natural objects, human beings, artifacts, and grave sites of important wali Muslim saints. Illness and other misfortunes are traced to such spirits, and if sacrifices or pilgrimages fail to placate angry deities, the advice of a dakun or healer is sought. Topic. Other practices Other practices include Tapa Paddy Geni avoiding fire or light for a day or days and isolating oneself in dark rooms Tapa Nadam stand, walk on foot from sunset till sunset, 24 hours in silence The rituals carried out on Mount Kemukas also known as Sex Mountain, which have also been linked to Kehoan. Topic. Historical texts 
Kabatinan and Kehuan practices are extensively written about in texts that are held in the Sonobudoyo Library in Yogyakarta, and the main Kraton libraries of Surakarta and Yogyakarta. Many of the texts are deliberately elliptical so that those who do not work with either initiates or teachers are unable to ascertain or understand the esoteric doctrines and practices. In quite a few cases codified texts with secret systems to «unlock» the meanings are employed, but according to Bruinesson, the writing down of Kabatinan teachings was a novelty which appeared with the institutionalization of the Kabatinan movements in the beginning of the 20th century. Kabatinan organizations The appearance of formal Kabatinan movements reflects the modernization of Indonesia. Kabatinan movements appeared early in the 1900s in urban traditional elite circles, together with the rise of nationalism and the Muhammadiyah, a modernist Islamic movement. Hardapasoro, one of the earliest Kabatinan movements, had strong links with the Theosophical Society. Some remained very elitist, while others also accepted lower urban and rural followings, thereby popularizing Abangan, or syncretistic Islam, as an alternative to Shari backquota oriented Islam. After the independence of 1949, the Kabatinan received political support and attracted large followings. Kabatinan movements were seen by secular nationalistic elites as allies against the rise of political Islam. The political struggle between the Muslim parties and the communists and nationalists lead to a sharper demarcation between syncretistic and shari oriented Islam, whereby most Kabatinan movements affiliated with the communist or nationalist parties, umbrella organizations representing several hundred Kabatinan organizations, lobbied to attain legitimacy and recognition as an official religion. They are registered at the HKP Himpunan Pengayat Kapekayan, which is controlled by the PAKEM Pengawas Alaran Kapekayan Masayarikat. After the Suharto era 1967 to 1998, the Kabatinan movements lost political support, and have become less dynamic, their adherents avoiding public engagement. Altogether several hundred Kabatinan groups are or have been registered, the best known of which are Subud Sumara Pangastu Sapta Dharma Majapahit Pankasila Subud Subud was founded in the 1920s by Muhammad Suba Sumo Hadawijojo. The name Subud was first used in the late 1940s when Subud was legally registered in Indonesia. The basis of Subud is a spiritual exercise commonly referred to as the Ladihan Kehiwan, which was said by Muhammad Suba to be guidance from the power of God or the great life force. The aim of Subud is to attain perfection of character according to the will of God. Only when passion, heart and mind are separated from the inner feeling is it possible to make contact with the great life force, which permeates everywhere. The name Subud is formed from the word Susila, the good character of man, Buddy, the force of the inner self, and Dharma, trust in God. These words are derived from the Sanskrit words Susila, body and Dharma. Muhammad Suba saw the present age as one that demands personal evidence and proof of religious or spiritual realities, as people no longer just believe in words. He claimed that Subud is not a new teaching or religion but only that the Ladihan Kehiwan itself is the kind of proof that humanity is looking for. He also rejected the classification of Subud as a Kabatinan organization. There are now Subud groups in about 83 countries, with a worldwide membership of about 10,000. Sumara Sumara was formed in the 1930s by Pak Hardo, Pak Sadina and Pak Satadi, without a formal organization. In those early days, the younger members were taught kanaman, occult practices including invulnerability for knives and guns. This was regarded as essential in the struggle against the Dutch colonial powers. Around 1950, when Indonesia became an independent nation, Sumara was streamlined and organized by Dr. Serono. The emphasis shifted from magic to surrender to God. From 1957 on, internal struggles surfaced between Drive, Serono, and the founders Pak Hardo and Pak Sadina, leading to a change in leadership by Dr. Ary Muthi in 1967. Sumara theology maintains that humankind's soul is like the Holy Spirit, a spark from the divine essence, which means that we are in essence similar to God. In other words, one can find God within oneself, a belief similar to the I equals God. Theory found in Hindu Javanese literature. According to Sumara theology, man and his physical and spiritual world are divided into three parts 
the physical body and brain. One section, sukuzma, governs the passions. In the brain, the faculty of thinking has two functions to record memories, to serve as a means of communion with God, the invisible world, which is situated within the chest. It is the jiwa, the ineffable soul, which provides the driving forces governing thought and reason. It is here that the deeper feeling rasa is located. The more elusive and sublime world. The most elusive and sublime world is hidden somewhere near the anatomical heart. Sumara's conception of God is different from Islam. It has a pantheistic vision of reality, considering God to be present in all living beings. Topic: <laughs> Pangastu. Pangastu was founded in 1949. Its doctrine was revealed in 1932 to Sunato Murtawajoyo, and written down in the Sita Sasanka Jati by R.T. Hajo Parakowo and R. Trihardono Sumodi Hajo Pangastu. It describes the way to obtain Wahyu, the blessing of God. <laughs> Sapta Dharma Sapta Dharma was founded in 1952 by Hajo Sapura, after he received a revelation. According to Srapawanang, it was God's wish to provide the Indonesian people with a new spirituality in a time of crisis. Its aim is to free man of his passions. According to Sapta Dharma teachings, suji meditation is necessary to pierce through different layers of obstacles to reach Sima, the guardian spirit of Java. Theory and practice resemble Hindu Kundalini Yoga, aiming at awakening the Kundalini energy and guiding it through the chakras. Majapahit Pankasila Majapahit Pankasila was founded by W. Harjantapaja Pangasa. It is based in Javanese Hindu yogic practices, c. q. Kundalini Yoga, rather than Balinese ritual practice as is prevalent in Parasada Hindu Dharma. According to Harjanta, his meditation practices also lead to invulnerability for knives, daggers and other weapons. Topic. Spread of Kabatanan Topic. Malaysia Kabatanan beliefs have spread to some parts of Malaysia, wherein certain individuals have combined it with Islamic concepts e.g. proclaiming themselves to be New Age Islamic prophets, but delivering messages that are a combination of Islamic and Kabatanan beliefs. This has led to the Malaysian Islamic authorities declaring elements of Kabatanan to be Syiric shirk and UN Islamic. Kabatanan interpretations of Islam are widespread in Malaysia among practitioners of Silat, traditional healers, and some preachers such as Arifan Muhammad and other self-proclaimed Islamic prophets. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Netherlands. In the Netherlands, the former colonial power in Indonesia, some Kabatanan groups are active. Topic: <inaudible> Singapore. Since the majority of Singaporean Malays are of Indonesian descent, particularly from Java, many of Kabatanan are still practiced usually among older people. However, the practice is still widespread among some Javanese Silat and Kuta Kepang groups and also traditional shamans. Topic. Suriname It was brought to Suriname by Javanese workers in the late 19th century. Topic. See also Sunda Wiwitan Balinese Hinduism Javanese calendar Javanese sacred places Mythology of Indonesia Wewei Gombal Ziarat Slametan Hanatu 1998 East Java Ninja Scare Notes <laughs>